Mr. Pablo Zapada, thank you uh, for giving us this interview and welcome to Free Europe. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Um, you are leading the United Nations Agency for a Refugee here in Romania uh, since the beginning uh, of the war in Ukraine started by Russia last year. Uh, at that time, there were hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian people coming in Romania. Now they are less than uh, 100,000. Uh, where are the rest of them? Well, most of the people uh, came uh, to Romania either directly from Ukraine or, or through the Republic of Moldova as a transit. Uh, and this is not only in the case in, in Romania, it has been also with all the other countries bordering uh, uh, Ukraine, of course. In total, uh, there is uh, uh, 3.8, close to 3.9 million people that we have uh, reported as having come directly from Ukraine or through the Republic of Moldova, of which, and you were right, is uh, less than 100,000, about 95,000 people to be exact, 95,600 remain in the country as of two days ago. Uh, this also includes the people who are transiting at that time. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's kind of a photo of, of, of a given day uh, provided by the authorities, it's not, uh, it's not our figures. So indeed, Romania has had the role of a transit country, but also a destination country. And being a transit country, uh, some people uh, may think, well, the, the people are just transiting. Well, the people who are transiting also need uh, many times some kind of assistance, some kind of guidance, some kinds of counselling. Do you know uh, what is the main reason for leaving Romania? Well, many people have already a destination in mind. So it's not a... Uh, before they came here. Before they came here. Uh, and, and particularly as the time passes, then uh, the new arrivals, for instance, the arrivals of uh, last winter, you remember the campaign of attacks to the uh, civilian infrastructure to, uh, that took place uh, throughout Ukraine and that prompted, in the case of, uh, of Ukraine, uh, of Romania, sorry, uh, receiving extra 30,000 persons who remain in the country for, for the winter period. Some of them have returned, some have stayed. But the people who come later, then they know somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not only for Ukrainian refugees, refugees worldwide. If they know, if they have a family member, if they have a, a friend, if they have a neighbor, it's easier to start when you know somebody. So uh, in a first phase, we saw that people, some of, of the people really living in the, in the first hours, in the first days, had no clear idea where they wanted to go. Uh, they just were uh, packing their things and leaving uh, uh, because of the, of the attacks uh, throughout the country. And then eventually the situation starts to settle down and people start to settle in different countries. Different countries put together different packages of, of support to refugees. Uh, the legal status throughout the European Union, the temporary protection, which was activated, uh, that gave uh, the, the same type of rights and, and obligations for uh, refugees from Ukraine throughout the European Union that also helped to contribute. And, and people have been finding their way. Uh, for how long? We don't know. We hope it's not long, but until uh, it is necessary. What do you expect for this autumn? Uh, because the, the war is prolonging yeah. and we don't have good news from the Beitefeld. Well, uh, in our case, uh, part of, of, uh, of, of our uh, uh, DNA, if you will, in the case of UNHCR, is to uh, be as ready as possible to support uh, the countries receiving refugees. This is also the case in Romania. Romania remains uh, a country where refugees are not only settling and are not only transiting, but a country ready uh, for many uh, uh, contingencies. Uh, and we are supporting those efforts uh, in, in our case. And uh, so, if we take the situation of, of last year as a guidance, where about 33,000 people uh, uh, came uh, and, and remain in Romania during the winter period, uh, we are uh, making provisions and the Romanian authorities are making provisions for that, should that uh, were to happen. Uh, but now the systems are more in place, if you will. Mm -hmm. So there, there are systems that are working, there is uh, at, the, at the local authorities level and at the national level, and then our role remains to support. And should there be a radical change in circumstances, we also are, are prepared to support. There are also Ukrainians on the borders or the, on the Romanian borders at that moment, yes. at this moment? Yes, yes. So yeah. they are still coming? They are still coming. Now, in this period of the year, and we saw the same last summer, is, is a, a period of what we call pendular movements. Mm -hmm. So people who have been here uh, try to go back home to see how is the situation, try to reunite with their loved ones, uh, also after the children have 
uh, finish the school period. In September, uh, also in Romania, the, the school starts. Yes. So we, we have uh, less than one month. Yes. <laughs> you recently met with the uh, Minister of uh, Education yes. and also with the uh, Minister of Internal Affairs. Yes. Uh, do you have any results? Yes, uh, first uh, we're grateful for, for the close relation uh, we've enjoyed uh, since the beginning of the crisis. With the Minister of Education was really to review uh, uh, what, how she saw the beginning of the new school year, which indeed is, is uh, uh, less than a month away. Uh, students are not, uh, as the days pass, <laughs> they see it closer. And, uh, and to see how this integration, uh, will, will, this inclusion uh, will take place. There's been a significant increase of uh, uh, children from How significant? Ukraine. Because last mm -hmm. year we had uh, 5,000 yes. uh, Ukrainian uh, children in the schools, so it was a very small part of them. Yes. Well, this year uh, the figures we have uh, is, is about 24,000 that have uh, enrolled. Uh, we will see uh, what happens in which schools they will be assigned. And, uh, and uh, of course there is a need to uh, pair the needs with the capacities. Because we don't have Ukraini Ukrainian teachers. We don't have uh, Ukrainian teachers. There are Ukrainian teachers uh, that have been providing supporting uh, a supporting role in some schools where some programs have been piloted, for instance, by the World Bank. Uh, and also there are uh, Ukrainian teachers working in what is called the education hubs, which, uh, which uh, have about 8,000 additional uh, kids uh, in a school. Uh, and we, are, uh, we have followed up uh, the, the, minister, uh, the meeting with Minister Deca uh, into uh, meetings that have been taking place with the uh, uh, county uh, inspectorates for education mm -hmm. and uh, particularly those that will be receiving the bigger amount of, of children to see how uh, uh, both UNICEF and UNHCR we can support. There are a number of, of, of uh, things going on uh, at, this, at this moment. Uh, but also we want to reach the level of how kids will relate to kids. Yeah? And uh, every kid is nervous when uh, uh, arriving to a new school. Uh, my son went through that uh, last year when we moved uh, to Romania uh, and I could see it uh, and, and we have seen as, as we have moved from, from country to country with my two children. Uh, it is always complicated to come to a school uh, uh, in which you may not speak uh, the language. Uh, we don't know anyone. You don't know anyone, you don't know how things will, will go. So there will be uh, a lot uh, to work, uh, if you will, also with uh, not only with the institutions but also at the level of the classroom with the teachers and with the pupils uh, because uh, at the end of the day and, and this is really uh, what we see everywhere in UNHCR uh, when we speak about refugee uh, matters and we uh, remain in the figures or remain about the big trends it is all good and fine but the real protection happens when people meet people the real encountering is, is fundamental and, and this happens in the workplace, this happens uh, in the metro, or happen uh, as, as, uh, as we were discussing a little bit uh, before this interview in the Gara del Nord in the first days. There's a number of places where when people meet people in the neighborhood, the dynamics changes. And do you know how many Ukrainians are working here in Romania? Well, we, we, we learned from the Ministry of Labor last week that the figure was 6,850. Uh, which is, uh, this is the official figure. Now, we know that at 25%, because of the, of the surveys we do, at 25% of the refugees who are in, uh, in Romania have kept their jobs in Ukraine or are somewhere teleworking. And they are uh, working remote, probably. They are working remote, uh, about at 25%. Plus then, more or less, uh, at 10% additional. Uh, these are the, the official figures, but the, the, again, the surveys we do, indicate that an additional 10% are working in Romania in one situation or another. Mm -hmm. So that makes about a 35% over a third, a little bit over a third of refugees who are already uh, self-sufficient. And, and that's quite encouraging. So between the figures of enrollment in schools and the figures of, uh, of uh, uh, accessing persons, accessing jobs, and this increases every day, and we have a number of partners working on that, not only us, but also other organizations, uh, that's, that's quite encouraging. It's not as fast as we would have liked, 
language barrier remains a major issue. Uh, recognition of, uh, of uh, previous labor experience, etc., also uh, uh, is something that needs to be worked uh, into, into the, the individual process of hiring a refugee, etc. Uh, but we are uh, relatively optimistic uh, with regards to that. And I have to say that uh, when the government decided uh, to uh, have a system of support still for a few months until the end of the year uh, to refugees, but at the same time request uh, that these refugees would enroll with the uh, National Agency for Employment for a job and enroll their kids in a school. This is the kind of approach uh, that we actually supported in terms of enabling uh, refugees to and encouraging refugees to uh, think of Romania as a country where they will stay for the time being. So do you think it was a good decision? It was a good decision. Absolutely, uh, the information we have uh, so far, uh, so the change of the system uh, was necessary from what it was called the 50-20 program into a new program. Everything we can do to bring kids to school and everything we can do to bring adults to the labor market is, is fundamental. Because there were very, uh, uh, a lot of uh, refugees, they were disappointed by this decision. Uh, which well, it is so understandable in a way. Uh, being a refugee is, is complex in so many different ways. One of the ways is that your life all of a sudden becomes a parenthesis, in brackets. You are in brackets. Uh, I don't know which are your, your plans for the next two to three weeks, your personal plans, your family plans, or uh, in, in, with regards to my plans. But then uh, if I wanted to, it was, if I was thinking at the uh, in the third week, at the beginning of the third week of, of February 2020, that I, maybe I, I need to change my job, maybe we need to do some works in the house. Uh, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, the, the school for the children? Shall we change? Shall we not? Uh, what about this investment we wanted to make? What about this? What about that? All that comes to an end. Disappears. Disappears. And it takes time to refocus and to in a way to consider that your life for the time being is somewhere else. Because of course as a refugee you look back every day. You have family, you have friends who are in a complex situation, you have a country which is struggling uh, for its own uh, uh, freedom and, uh, and... Suddenly you don't have anything. And suddenly you don't have anything and it takes time to, to say, you know what, for the time being I am here and I'm going to make the best out of it. And, and uh, we see the, the, the experience in many countries when refugees go back to the country, they come back more empowered. They have lived other experience, in this case in a EU member state, they are exposed to some other kind of standards in different things, and they will contribute better or in a different way uh, to, the, to the rebuilding and the continuation of, of, of Ukraine when they go back. So our invitation to them is to make the best out of it. Uh, and I think that decision of the government goes absolutely into that, into that uh, direction. Can you give us please some examples from other uh, European countries, uh, how they are dealing with refugee, Ukrainian refugees mm. this year, for example, uh, and please give us some examples of concrete mm -hmm. uh, measures they took for refugees. So it, it really de depends on the country uh, and the levels of assistance are different. The, the standard, the basic set of rights and, uh, and of course obligations are the same through the temporary protection directive. Uh, some countries uh, work like uh, uh, Romania did in terms of ensuring uh, something so basic but so fundamental that there's no refugees living in the streets. Okay. So the housing, housing was fundamental. And in Romania, it took the shape of the 50-20. In other countries, took other shapes, in uh, shapes of, of, of also uh, financial contribution or availability of social housing for refugees. Uh, and I recall early discussions with uh, with delegations from Ireland, as far as, as, as Ireland, uh, uh, going a little bit like a similar uh, situation as, as Romania, saying, well, uh, we have a long waiting list for Irish citizens for social housing. So how can we make the best uh, for the people who are coming because of this war uh, and at the same time uh, send a message to our population that of course they are not uh, the same discussion here. It is the same discussion, we but it's the same discussion. Kids. It's we the have same discussion our poor kids. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. And there is no contradiction between them. And it is important, particularly for a, for a country like uh, Romania, uh, to refocus on the issue of numbers. Uh, and I said that it was the most important is, is, the, is the personal contact. But let's, let's go a couple of steps up into, into the numbers. And I've used uh, sometimes this, this, um, this comparison. 95,000 people is the size of a big football stadium. Uh, I am a fan of Real Madrid, which has 81,000 people. I live the, nearby the stadium of uh, Real Madrid, so I would see every second Sunday or every Wednesday people coming in similar numbers to the neighborhood in a way. Uh, and the Barcelona Stadium, which uh, I'm, I'm not really happy to give that, uh, that good example, but they have 99,000 persons every given Sunday in, in, the, in the Camp Nou. Now, of course, the situation is more complex for refugees, but we cannot really think that a country like Romania cannot deal with that. If that were the case, it, it would be really uh, something terrible. Uh, we cannot say that Spain cannot deal with 180,000 persons. That is a few, is the Barcelona plus Real Madrid Stadium. Uh, the institutions are there, the capacity is there, the will is there. Uh, what we need to be sure is that the messages don't get confused. And What's that, missing? I think at this point, uh, on the one hand, there are different elements. So on the one hand, it is refugees making up their minds that they need to make the best of their time here in Romania. That's one element. Uh, another element is the institutions. Uh, accepting that this is a situation that they need to adapt to. Uh, and it's not uh, for six months, it's not uh, uh, for eight months, we don't know how long it will be. So the sooner this adaptation uh, takes place, uh, the better. Uh, at the same time, it's the society. Uh, the society is, is, is not a competition for resources because many of these resources really come from, from different sources and not, are certainly not affecting the, the social programs for, for Romania. There are a lot of lies and a lot of uh, understood things yes. they are circulating to the social media. Yes, there are. And that's Which are why the most dangerous? In, in UNHCR, because we started to see this and we discussed with a number of partners, we discussed also with the authorities, and, and we decided to launch our own campaign uh, for several weeks that has focused on myths and reality, if you will, and on a critical element that we were seeing uh, in, in social media, but also when discussing uh, with, uh, with the host families, with the host communities, which is this understanding that people were not, uh, that, that uh, some Romania, some Ukrainian refugees were not grateful. So the, the, the campaign focused on uh, Moltomes Romania, uh, Thank You Romania, and it gave the possibility to six cases, but through them, to the wider community, to make manifest uh, what refugees tell us every day when, when, when we work and we talk with them, which is, listen, we are extremely grateful for being here. Mr. Pablo Zapada, thank you very much for thank giving us much. this interview. Thank you very much.